1654, Irish families travel west as part of a home exchange program. For the last decade or so, a way of looking at history became very dominant and became and, and was called revisionism. Not a great title, I think, because obviously to revise history on the basis of new truths is a correct thing to do and a valid thing to do. However, I think what uh, the people who became known as revisionists were doing was something quite different from that. I believe what they were doing was reinterpreting Ireland's history uh, in a specific way in order to justify a reactionary status quo. They sought to deny or to undercut uh, any colonial analysis of Irish history. History as a political football, negative revisionism, that's what I fight against. <laughs> In 1847, two peasants debate the benefits of a low-starch diet. Two peasants who are discussing a low-starch diet, um, it, they in fact were part of a much larger tableau, so um, I removed uh, some of the other elements, uh, rather way, the way I suppose a film editor edits film, and uh, I, I also turned them around to talk to one another. Colonial oppression of culture is again something that seems to, to me to be revised out of current historical analysis. I took an engraving which showed a piper uh, being hung for playing subversive tunes during the 1798 rebellion. But again, I edited it slightly and, and, and concentrated the, uh, the action to the, the hanging piper and the two soldiers who are laughing at him dangling from a tree. In 1798, in order to raise musical standards, the authorities introduce innovative critical techniques. In constructing the images and in, in presenting the images with the, the captions, I wanted to, to do it in a way that was non-hectoring and non-propagandistic. So I, I deliberately chose not to name things. I mean, I always say things like the authorities, not the, the British government or whatever because um, I always believed that uh, you can get your point across with, uh, with subtlety uh, much more efficiently than you can do uh, through shouting at people. So uh, I've, I quite deliberately made the, the thing slightly obscure, although to anyone with, uh, with any kind of sensibilities at all would know precisely what the uh, images were about. To encourage social mobility, Volunteers teach English to native speakers. One of the things that has always interested me is the fact that through reproduction you can make images that are widely available to a wide public. And it seemed to me that uh, these images should not be simply uh, framed in gold frames and hung individually on the wall to be admired by uh, just a few people are hated, as the case may be, by a few people. But that I wanted to reflect on the fact that, uh, that this debate should go wider than the confines of an art gallery or, or, or that kind of space. And it seemed to me that by using reproductive techniques, I could at least hint at that possibility. But images obviously can be presented in, in many different ways. And recently I've been working with uh, projection and, and that, that's really interesting because the original, I suppose, is a slide to some extent, but one doesn't intend the slide to be the original. People come and look, and in the, in the example I'm talking about here, my images were, were blown up through projection to 60, 70 feet across, and that's what the, the artistic um, impact is supposed to be, an image that size, and yet it's ephemeral, it's gone. Content is the inside of style, and style is the outside of content. Some of the images that I have uh, generated have been picked up by others and reproduced by others. Uh, probably the best known in recent years was the, the logo that I did for the Time for Peace, Time to Go campaign in 1994. But 
the logo seemed to catch on and eventually ended up in gable walls all over um, the north of Ireland. And uh, most famously, when the ceasefire was announced, the leadership of Sinn Féin were actually standing in front of a huge version of the logo in West Belfast. So the logo was actually transmitted all over the world because obviously uh, it, this was a major international news item. So that was quite interesting, you know, that, that an image that one generated quietly in, in the studio suddenly now is, is being transmitted all around the globe. As the ways and means of reproduction become more accessible, the ways and means of its distribution become fewer. For the artist who's uh, seriously concerned about engaging with social reality, the situation can be quite complex and quite difficult because the visual arts in particular exist in, in a very strange world, a world that has essentially walls built around us. Now, those walls have not been built from the outside. They're built from the inside. And um, I believe they are to keep the public out, essentially. And the artists and the museum curators and the critics and all who are engaged in this process don't want the public to be involved, I, I, I honestly believe. And they, you know, engage in extravagant and daring exercises in avant-garde art which um, are supposed to challenge and to stimulate. But in fact, they essentially exclude the public. I know some artists uh, are deeply worried and concerned when their work is to be reproduced. Um, I mean, the first thing that one must be said is that a reproduction uh, of a painting is, is, is different than the painting, uh, which seems almost a self-evident truth. But I don't think uh, artists should be... Um, so concerned about the reproduction looking exactly like the painting. It's a different thing. You can never exactly reproduce what a painting is, but you can reproduce what a painting says. Some of my paintings, I believe, have ended up looking better and saying what they're trying to say better in terms of reproduction than in the original paintings. I have to have a reason for everything in my work. But I believe, and this is where I agree with Che Guevara, who spoke about the invisible cage, that's what, how he defined this uh, privileged circle, that artists who do not see the bars of the invisible cage are being fundamentally dishonest. And I certainly would, would agree with that. And that in fact becomes part of the artist's task to uh, not only see those invisible bars, but to challenge them. I believe that the real art, radical art is uh, today is the art that actually speaks the language that people can understand.